What fake thing that happens in movies pisses you off. Dig in graves in wooded areas. There are effing roots everywhere. You can't dig a six foot grave with a pair of shovels in an hour. That sh takes time. Are people shooting at you? Take cover behind. Anything. Car doors. Drywall. Couches. Tables. Cardboard boxes. It doesn't matter. Everything is bulletproof. Hacking anything in seconds. I'm accessing the mainframe to open the security doors for you. Clickety clack click click clickety click rapidly. I'm in. Other guy. You really are the best hacker. Ha. Oh. I didn't hack it. I just typed admin in both the login and password fields. Most places never change that sh. They never seem to make mistakes typing either. You never hear the telltale sound of the backspace key. Mafia guys. Mobsters or hitmen. People who are in the business of killing people and disappearing inconveniences are intentionally clumsy or stupid when it comes to kill the protagonist. No double tap. Overcomplicated killing. Taking their sweet time. Not putting more than one or two henchmen for a particularly dangerous hostage. Where a witness confesses on the stand. There's sudden surprise prosecution evidence. Witnesses monologuing on the stand. Minimal hearsay objections. So much forensic evidence. Drives me batty. The fresh out of college student scoring a great apartment in a swanky part of town while working minimum wage job for themselves. In reality, you'd have four roommates for such a place. Or you're living in a dump in a bad part of town. When someone throws a grenade into a building and the whole building blows up. Grenades in movies either destroy everything in a mile radius or they are the equivalent of light shove. There is no in between. And there's always a fireball. Grenades don't make much fire. I know it's the most common one but since it hasn't been mentioned yet, I'll mention it. Gun reloads, or lack thereof, and the insane amount of ammunition the protagonist is carrying. That everyone in a Tom Cruise movie is the same height or shorter than him. After a hit to the head or being knocked unconscious, people are fine after a minute. Concussions don't seem to exist in movies. It's super bad for you. God bless Archer. Shooting the monitor as a way of stopping the computer. Alright let me tell you the good news. We don't need the monitor. Oh my god I love Spurdiverse so damn much. Especially that scene. Laughed my A off the first time. People sneaking around inside air ducts. Don't get me wrong. In big buildings you absolutely can walk around in there. I've done it a lot. But, 1. They're dirty as sin. Not gleaming metal. 2. There are screws poking in there and sharp edges everywhere. 3. There are lots of barriers to movement. Fans. Filters. Humidifiers. Dampers and fire dampers. All of those would stop your progress. 4. It's not a quiet process. That metal bongs and clunks like crazy under your weight. Reminds me of the Mythbusters episode where Adam tries sneaking through a duct using magnets and it sounds like a damn cannon. Movie depictions of childbirth are often ridiculously wrong. They make it look so easy, quick, and clean. This is not the case. The baby comes out clean and 3 months old. My kid came out of a cut in my wife's stomach. 9 pounds and 50 pence and looked like a screaming bloody fat purple sumo wrestler. Seeing my wife with her stomach open like that has been scarred into my mind. I'm glad she had the screen and couldn't see. Yeah, the process is much more traumatic than I expected. OBTW this whole thing can kill both your wife and your child in one go. And we're really busy with 50 other people. So you'll need to use your zero medical knowledge to alert us for when it's time for the baby to actually come. I hope you get a bunch of sleep now because you won't get much when the barb is here. Tee hee. Yeah, thanks. The sleep deprivation wasn't particularly fun. Meanwhile, over here at T plus 30 minutes I'm thanking god that I don't have to plan two funerals while also trying to chit chat with a billion relatives that I didn't know I had all trying to see Ethabababai. Fire, lava, etc. Has no heat people can be suspended over a volcano, or in the case of the Hobbit, surf on molten metal and no one gets so much as a blister. Add to this. Characters falling into the lava and sinking like it's just glowing yellow pudding. Setting aside that they'd probably actually burst into flame and steam on contact if not before. Lava still has the density of rock. You ain't gonna sink into that. Don't forget that it's okay to breathe the superheated gases coming from the lava too. I remember a movie in which they stopped lava from entering the city using concrete blocks. And then they tried to cool it off by spraying water on it. 
A truly amazing scene. Yes, that was a movie about a volcano that erupts in Los Angeles. So they have to get a volcano expert to help them stop the volcano from destroying everything. I think it was called, The Mountain Full of Lava. Whenever some idiot is running on foot while being chased by a car that's trying to run them down, they without fail always run straight down the middle of the street, when all they have to do is simply run off to the side where there's trees and lampposts and plenty of other sh to block them from getting hit. In that case, I always root for whoever's driving. This is common when running away from almost anything. Big boulder chasing you down. Run straight. Never turn. Some tall skinny pillar falling down. Run lengthwise. Don't try to sidestep it. Or when they do run to the side it's always at the last second for style points. When they could have sidestepped it from the very beginning. But it wouldn't have looked as cool. The member of the group that sacrifices themselves for no reason. Go on without me. I'll never make it. Yes you will. I'll carry you. No. Seriously. Go on. The writer needs me to die here so that I'm not with you guys when you need me later or so that you can use me as he would have wanted you to. Excuse. But it doesn't make sense for him to die here. So, I'm going to need you to get all the way off my back about this. Homes are always spotless and ridiculously large. And inhabited by people who were taken from House Hunter's central casting. She is a part-time kindergarten teaching assistant. He plays a tambourine in a Fleetwood Mac cover band. Their budget is 12 million dollars. Gotta love the marketing intern that lives in a spacious Nick apartment by herself. Craig and Starcher are looking for a two-story A-frame that's near Craig's job in the downtown, but also satisfies Starcher's need to be near the beach, which is nowhere near Craig's job, with three children and nine on the way, and a max budget of seven dollars. Let's see what Laurie Joe can do on this week's episode of You Don't Deserve a Beach House. Every time a car drives off stops there's a sound of tires screeching, even if on a dirt road. Bad science talk in general. Quantum nanotechnology. English please? The old out of the blue intentional T-bone car accident, like the bad guy's psychic and knew when and where to be, and is totally immune to the flow of traffic so they could time it just right to T-bone someone in an intersection. Absurd. Not to mention it never seems to actually succeed in causing the death of the intended victim. Nor does the bad guy ever seem to get injured at all. I wonder how many times the bad guy missed trying to do that before. Like he sets up his run for the T-bone but doesn't realize the intended victim stopped at a previous red light or stop sign so the timing was all off. Stops semi-trailer at green light. Honk. F off. I'm waiting to T-bone somebody. Doesn't piss me off. But as a paraplegic whenever someone in a movie is supposed to be disabled and they're using some shti fold up wheelchair that you would see in a hospital or Walmart. Anyone who lives in a wheelchair and has some minimal insurance or medical assistance would have a much better chair. I'm currently sitting with about $4,000 under my A. Paid about $500 after insurance. The only time someone would be using one of those shti wheelchairs would be if they were recently injured or are temporarily injured. Neck breaking for an easy or quick kill. I'm getting sick of it. Careful how hard you roll your eyes at that stunt I saw a movie where a guy broke his neck doing that once. I don't know. Seems pretty realistic to me. Slight inconveniences that could easily be solved that are the main conflict of the movie. Paul Mark anyone? 30-40 year olds living high school or even JR high level drama. That a sample can be DNA processed in 2 minutes so you know who your killer is. On Lucifer. It's so over the top. I'm not even mad. The CSI chick will be standing over the body at the crime scene and tell them what the lab results were. Ella really is crazy with that. Another thing I love is when they are in some kind of crisis and Ella's like. I can run it in the lab but it will take some time. And someone else is like. We don't have time. Which allows Ella to magically get DNA results in 2 minutes. Acting like an easily removable piece of duct tape silences someone. When I was a teenager I played with duct tape often, and I felt the need to test this trope. I put a single piece of duct tape over my own mouth and gave it the best seal I could give. I was able to remove it with my tongue in just a few seconds. Yes, in real life it only muffles the screaming slightly. Setting off fire alarm fire sprinklers. Pulling a fire alarm will not activate fire sprinklers. Setting off a single sprinkler head will not set off the entire system. Each fire sprinkler has either a glass bulb with heat sensitive liquid or a metal fusible link. 
you need to essentially break the bulk link on each individual sprinkler to allow the water to flow. The water leaving the sprinkler system will be black from the years of corrosion that occurs inside due to the stagnant water. You do not want to be around this water when it comes out. I design these systems. I know how this works. If I am not wrong, you are the expert. It takes a significant amount of heat also. Ordinary temperature sprinkler heads are 155 F. These will be the most common sprinkler heads you will come across. You can tell because the bulb color will be red. You will also have a standard response bulb, 5 mm thick, and quick response bulb, 3 mm thick. Gift wrapping the box and the lid separately. I mean, I get why they do it, multiple takes, but it always sticks out to me. Also, every bag of groceries has French bread. All the groceries, apart from the French bread, are spherical items like oranges and melons and they always drop them and they roll away. Last night I had baguettes and loose oranges for dinner. So that's literally what I buy. And there's the same newspaper in every TV show. I concede your first point. But damn it. Every grocery bag should have a baguette in it. How terrible the bad guys are at shooting. And good guys just pull out a gun while running and shoot a dude dead from across the parking lot. THX for silver woo woo. EMT's doctor's random hero person using a defibrillator on a person that has flatlined. That is not how it works. You shock a flatline and all you do is make the patient even more dead. Flatliners get drugs to get their hearts beating, and then get shocked if that beat is abnormal. Most mod needs won't even let you shock someone if they're flatlining, or if they don't have an arrhythmia. Exactly. Unfortunately the myth of shocking a flatline is so prevalent that most people don't seem to know that. I can only hope that if I keel over somewhere, the eat brought to me is particularly user friendly. All you do is make the patient even more dead. He's dead. Jim. Goddammit. Make him more dead. Rubs paddles. Clear. He's dead. Are you sure? Shocks yes. That bugs the shout of my wife. Rn. 2. I make sure to point it out to her each time. Just in case she's not paying attention. They did that on ER for like 10 years. Nobody bothered to tell them. When the plot necessitates the protagonist to be unconscious for several hours due to a blow to the head, then he she just regains consciousness, shakes their head a few times, and is back to normal. I've had several concussions from sports in my life, and only one where I lost consciousness and that was for maybe several seconds. For that one I spent weeks fighting nausea, headaches, and vision problems. My mood was impacted for months. There's no way I could just get up and start kicking A after being out for several hours. If you're out for several hours from a blow to the head it's pretty unlikely you will ever wake up. Also, if someone cracks you on the head hard enough to induce unconsciousness, you're probably going to spend the next little while either seizuring, throwing up, or just really really tired and dizzy. You're certainly not going to leap up and chase someone along a moving train. When they give a person CPR and the person walks away unscathed. When you give proper CPR, you are essentially breaking ribs to pump the heart and sure, it doesn't happen to everyone but still see a doc after that, and anything medically related like EP pens being used then magically all normal. All of these require being looked at a doctor emergency care directly afterward. So, I've had to use EP for an aphylaxis and it is bonker balls, like... My whole body started vibrating for 2 solid minutes and I wanted to fight and cry and I was so mad at absolutely nothing. But this student paramedic was monitoring me to make sure I didn't have a heart attack so I felt obligated to be nice to him. I had to try really hard to keep my inside voice from moving to outside voice. I could see more things. Like my field of vision was more clear and the room was brighter. Then. Afterwards I had to get liters of saline and steroids via IV and was still at risk of rebound reactions for 24 hours. And every muscle in my body hurt and I was exhausted. Amazingly though, it did almost instantly stop the anaphylaxis. My throat relaxed. My mouth stopped tingling. My legs stopped itching. Head to toe in probably 3-4 seconds. Just wild. Eater. Thanks for the awards. Epipens are literally pumping adrenaline into you. You're getting a flood of holy sh you're about to die if you don't get your A moving right now hormone. It's gonna make you go clumsy beast mode for a few minutes. And then you get a huge crash. In British soaps, which are she in general, everyone goes to the pub every day but no one ever gets drunk. They also order a pint. 
Take one sip and then just leave. Okay, but please tell me that your quaint country village is really a high society murder mills though. I've watched enough BBC TV to know they are the most dangerous place on earth. Any scene where chloroform knocks someone out in 2 seconds. I feel like Rio officially has gone too far. It takes at least 5 minutes and the dose difference between asleep and dead is really slim. You'll also likely throw up while you're out, or after you wake up. So that's nice. Guys who get rejected and then stalk the girl and win her over at the end of the movie. Rom-com protagonist. I love her, but she doesn't love me back. Rom-com friend. Have you tried being really annoying and creepy? Everyone knows that stalking is romantic. Women's hair is always perfect after a crazy action sequence. They are also wearing heels all the time. No matter what crazy stunts they are doing. This one makes me crazy. If your job involves running, jumping, fighting, or any sort of physical activity at all, you don't wear stilettos. Looking at you Jurassic World, bloody running away from a T-Rex in heels, should be dead. Let me kill all the bad guys to prove my innocence. Kill an army of mooks. But you can't kill the bad guy with a name because my cycle of revenge would be just like him. The lesson I got from that is only the leaders are people. Everyone else is an animal it's okay to slaughter. Okay MR. Hero. Looks like you have all the evidence from the bad guy's secret lair that proves they set you up for the murder of your wife. Terribly sorry about that. Gruff voiced I just wanna see my kids. Chief. Oh. No. You're going to prison. I've got multiple counts of vigilante action. Murder. Destruction of public property. Destruction of private property. That car you stole to chase the bad guys. Evading arrest. And jaywalking. When people fall in love and decide to spend together the rest of their lives after spending 5 minutes together. Hackers in movies. Enters a few key strokes. I'm in. You may get a kick out of her Kurt Ippinet. Romantic dramas. Some stupid miscommunication that could have been resolved with 5 minutes of conversation and a phone call turns into some feature length bullsh. The movie situation. Girl walks in on boyfriend hugging another girl. Girl. I can't believe you cheat on me. I hate you. Boy. Wait. I can explain. Girl. Don't bother. I hate you and never want to see you again. Cute 2 hours of cute romantic comedy hijinks. The real situation. Girl walks in on boyfriend hugging another girl. Girl. I can't believe you cheat on me. I hate you. Boy. UMM this is my sister. Girl. Oh. God. Sorry. Q credits. I have shouted just say actual words to each other. At so many movies. It's not just dumb romantic dramas comedy as it seems like idiotic and easily address miscommunication is a major plot driver for a lot of different kinds of movies. All the incorrect. Blatantly incorrect physics. Drowning revivals. Victim is pulled. Blue. From the water. Couple of chest compressions. Hero through gritted teeth says don't you die on me goddammit. Small arc of water shoots from the mouth of the victim as they cough twice and immediately regain consciousness. Sit up and ask what happened. Alright. It's not the chest compressions that do it. It's the unconscious. Possibly dead. Person hearing don't you die on me. Damn it. That really brings them back to life. Medical fact. Like how Babe Ruth cured a kid's cancer just by smiling at him. IKR secondary drowning is a thing. You can't just go on with your day. I don't think he knows about second drowning. Pip. Firing guns in enclosed space is not deafening anyone. I always think of the tank scene from early Walking Dead days when I see this now. That's like the one semi-accurate portrayal I've ever seen. Or when they shoot at extremely close range but the gun gets knocked away last second by the hero so the shot just grazes their ear. Like, you are now deaf in that ear at least temporarily dude. I've not seen much of this show but I read a post once that made me laugh. About how the zombies seem to make so much noise but are able to sneak up on the protics. And someone theorized it was because they had been firing weapons for so long without hearing protection that they were actually always screaming at each other and they are practically deaf but because we're seeing it from their pov it seems like they are just talking. So when they think they are talking quietly sneaking through the woods or whatever they are actually yelling at one another and that's why they continuously get surprised by things that are constantly making noise. At least Archer got this right. And Black Hawk down. Tell that to my tinnitus. Morp. In the movie Snatch one group of characters gets some replica guns. UK so it's not easy to get real ones. 
and says he loaded them with some extra loud blanks to be especially intimidating. Replicas but still fire blanks? I don't know. That's what was in the movie. One of his buddies questions the effectiveness so to demonstrate he fires one off in the car they are all in. It blows the side windows out and effens everyone inside who then yell at him. Zoom in on that. Can you make it clearer? Sure. No problem. 2 MPCC TV screen grab. Enhance enhance enhance. Just print the goddamn picture. When they take a drink out of an obviously empty cup and don't even bother pretending to swallow the drink. Is it so hard to just have some water in the cup? Or when they set down a cup and you can hear that the cup is empty. That always bugs me at movie theaters when they are showing the coke ads. The person gets a huge coke and takes a drink and it sounds like it's empty. I always want them to turn around and ask the concession person to actually fill the cup this time. Full cup of hot coffee. Yet they are talking with their hands as if they are not holding anything at all. That must take some courage and finesse to accomplish that feat. In action movies, the hero, often alone faces an army of elite trained veterans armed to the teeth but they can't seem to know how to shoot, take cover, use tactics or fight, and why are they taking turns to get their ass kicked, just stomp them off their fur, Steven Seagal movies are the worst at this, Seagal will fight a whole room of bad guys who attack one at a time after announcing their presence, if all eight of them just went in at once, they'd easily murder him. This is why people like Die Hard. Sean McClane kills a whole team of bad guys by himself. But he do it by outsmarting them taking them one at a time. Every time he is outnumbered. He flee. And barely make it out. And not without getting seriously hurt. And his injuries don't magically disappear. What a shame of a downward spiral of sequels that was. The first three were pretty smart. Fun. And had good action. The fourth. While not the worst thing I've ever seen turns John McClane into Invincible Hero Man. The fifth one is just a massive piece of sh**. I love the John Wick movies but damn the bad guys love to jump out of cover at convenient moments. Bother me the most about the John Wick movie is when all the bad guys with guns runs up to John to get killed. You have a gun. It will be effective at a distance of more than 5 feet. The phone rings and the actor picks up the handset. Listens for 2 seconds. Oh really? 1 second later. When? One second later, I'll be right there, hangs up without saying goodbye. The actor turns around and relays a 30 seconds of details that he just learned in only 4 seconds. The home screen on the phone also being visible and clearly not in a call. When an actor clearly has no idea how to play the instrument they are holding, they don't have to be an expert. But Christ someone show them where their fingers are supposed to go, or stop focusing the shot on their fingers. Flipped very well in School of Rock where Jack Black is an accomplished musician, and the kids in the band really did play their instruments sang. They've done live performances together, pretty rad. Also Whiplash, Miles Teller plays the shout of those drums. Drumline, not so much, but Nick Cannon did a good job of faking it, not like the OP describes at all. When someone is driving and they look away from the road by looking at the person in the passenger seat for a prolonged amount of time. Or when they are constantly turning the wheel and the car doesn't move. Things like that bother me too much lol. When someone is driving and they look away from the road by looking at the person in the passenger seat for a prolonged amount of time. I've seen people do this in real life and it is terrifying. Three times now I've seen actors doing this followed by the car getting into a horrific accident. Usually getting t-boned so we see the second car coming. And now I always expect it to happen when they spend more than 2 seconds with their eyes off the road. Was watching a film last night and the main character took his eyes off the road and stared at the passenger for a good 10 seconds. Was definitely expecting a crash but nothing lol. Parasite actually did this pretty well. There's a scene where the father's driving the rich guy and is doing just that. And I was getting anxious seeing him do that. And then the rich guy gets pissed and tells him to keep his eyes on the road. I like that in the office it's filmed when they're actually driving a real car around. There are bloopers where they make a wrong turn and end up at a dead end or forget where a control is because it's the car used for the show and not their personal car they're used to driving. 